so let us start with uh, uh, today's class. Can we see the screen? All of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let us start with our today's session. It is our sixth QA session. How many of you have attended the last session? I think quite a few. Uh, due to some technical issues, I couldn't upload the last session. If possible, I'll take another class for it. Okay. So let us start with today's class. This is question number one. Which sir, of the following? Sir, recording does it on you? Yeah, it has. Uh, it is already on. Okay. Which one of the following suggested that the governor should be an eminent person from outside the state and should be a detached figure? Without intense political link, or should not have taken part in the policies in the recent past. Please answer this one. Okay. Sir, see you on one side. Okay. So let us discuss about it. First ARC. First ARC actually, uh, it has not suggested anything about this post of the governor. Rather, it was more confined to the domain of administration. OK. Rajmanar committee. Can anyone tell me which government has uh, formed this uh, Rajmanar committee? Sorry, I can't get you. It was DMK, right? That was the first regional screen, not visible. Uh, can anyone tell me visible. whether the screen is visible or not? Visible, visible, sir. Visible. Okay. okay, And why was uh, this Tarkaria Commission was formed? Can anyone tell me? This has been formed for giving recommendations about center state relations. Okay. Relations. So the answer to this question is question uh, this Tarkaria Commission. Okay. It was first, it was formed to give recommendations on the center state relations. OK. So let us uh, look into the, uh, the recommendations that were given by it. First, why was the position of the governor is so uh, uh, crucial? OK. Why has it uh, why has it become so much controversial in the recent past? My voice is not clear. All of you, it's clear. Clear, clear sir. Okay. So, can anyone tell me what was the reason why the position of the governor has become controversial? We have already discussed about it. Yes, centers control and appointment, right? Because the position of the governor is subjected to the pleasure of the president. The president can appoint as well as remove the governor, right? And uh, though he is the constitutional head of the state, but due to the politicization of the position of the governor, it has become controversial. Okay, So that was the reason why this Sarkaria Commission, it was formed for recommending, for giving recommendations on the central state relations. So. It has given certain recommendations for the post of the governor. Okay, to make the position of the governor and uh, uh, the position of the chief minister less uh, to uh, I mean uh, bring about less friction among them. 
first he should be an eminent in some walk of life he should be an eminent person he should be a person from outside the state so that he will not uh, have any political aspirations for the state and he should be a distanced figure not too intimately connected with the local politics of the state that is why this is the, the one right he should be a person who is outside from the state and he should be a person who has not taken too great part in politics generally and particularly in the recent past because the governor is the constitutional head of the state the administration of the state is taken in the name of the governor right and we have discussed in detail how the administration of the state has been carried out in the name of the governor okay how the governor carries out his uh, activities under the officer subordinate to him right we have discussed it in our previous classes so as per the sarkaria commission consultation of chief minister should be there in the appointment of the governor so that there would be less friction between these positions because chief minister is the de facto head and governor is the de jure head of the state and the governor's term should be 5 years and it should not be disturbed except for some extremely compelling reasons and the governor cannot dismiss the council of minister as long as it commands majority in the assembly and article 356 that is president rule should be used very sparingly okay and after sarkaria commission which commission has come for center state relations can anyone tell me it was the punchi commission yes it was the punchi commission so punchi commission has also taken these recommendations from the sarkaria commission that is let us check out and along with the, these recommendations he has added some more points like the tenure should be fixed for 5 years and the procedure of impeachment of the governor should be same as that of the president okay this is one of the major recommendation of the punchi commission and the discretionary power Uh, how many types of discretion does the governor exercise one is constitutional discretion and another one is situational discretion right right so it should be dictated by a reason and it should be based on good faith and tempered by passion right and in case of the bills there should be a strict timeline like for 6 months and within that the government should the governor should have should uh, give its decision right and one more thing this national commission to review the working of the committee of the constitution this has also found this is and this has also recommended the same thing as the sarkaria commission that is the governor should be appointed only after the consultation with the chief minister of the state okay and the question whether the ministry in the state has lost the confidence of the assembly should be tested only on the floor of the house can anyone tell me which judgment of the supreme court is related to this that whether the government in a state is in majority or not it could only be decided on the floor of the house it was based on a supreme court judgment yes very good this is sr bomai judgment 1994 based on this judgment the whether uh, the government in a state has its majority or not would be decided only on the floor of the house by virtue of the no confidence motion okay and not uh, as per the fins and fences of the governor like governor cannot arbitrarily dismiss the state government so let us move on to the next question please answer this one in the areas covered under the panchayat extension to scheduled areas what is the role and power of the gram sabha B 
be one and two. Okay. Okay. What about three? Whether it is correct or not. Okay, yes, very good. Sir, any of any minor or no? Yes, only for minor minerals. Okay. So the first option is correct and the second option is also correct. So let us read more about it. The Gram Sabha has the power to prevent the alienation of land and to restore any unlawfully alienated land in the schedule of the scheduled tribe. Okay. Can anyone tell me why we had required this uh, PESA Act? What is the rationale behind it? Because 73rd Constitutional Amendment is not applicable to the 5th Scheduled Areas. Okay. For those areas, we need this PESA Act. Okay. Statement 3 is incorrect because the Gram Sabha can grant prospecting license for mining lease only for minor minerals. Can anyone tell me what is this prospecting license? What do you understand by the term prospecting? Prospecting money con. Anyone? Initial surveying, yes, kind of. Any company first, it would have to do some boreholes and all, and after that, it will estimate how much reserve is there and what kind of reserving is uh, reserve is there, and that is known as prospecting. And that prospecting license would be granted by the Gram Sabha for minor minerals. Next, please answer this question. This is a very simple question. What is the system of governance in the Panchayatra setup? Very simple question. At least all of you should answer this question. See you, sir. Yes. Three tier structure for local self government at the village, block, and the district level. Okay. So, how is the chairman of the intermediate? Uh, okay. So, if a state has a population which is less than 20 lakh, can we? have this kind of structure for it okay so what would be the structure yes two tires we can go for village and the district levels and we can uh, okay yes yes this is the optional provision no intermediate level this is optional. They can keep it or they cannot keep it. Okay. So this 73rd Amendment Act, it has provided for three type system of Panchayat Raj in every state. Yes. And if a state's population is not exceeding 20 lakh, they may not constitute the Panchayat at the intermediate level. Okay. So let us read about the compulsory provisions of the 73rd Amendment. These are the most important provisions. First, organization of the Gram Sabha in a village or a group of villages. What do you understand by this Gram Sabha? It consists of the all, all, the, the, yes, all, all the registered voters of the area. Okay. Then establishment of the panchayat at the village, intermediate, and the district level. Direct elections to all seats for the panchayats at the village, intermediate, and the district level. Okay. Like ward members and panchayat samiti members and jilla parishad members. We have three tier system in Odisha also. Okay. In the intermediate state, we call it as panchayat samiti, and district level, we call it as jilla parishad. Okay. So all the members, like the ward members, the Panchayat Samiti members, and the Jilla Parishad members, they are directly elected. Okay. 
and then indirect elections to the post of the chairperson of the panchayats at the intermediate and the district level okay so the chairman of the panchayat samiti and the chairman of the jilla parishad would be indirectly elected from among the elected members next what is the minimum age limit that is 21 years okay and we have reservation of seats at all three levels it will be proportionate to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe population of the area and one third seat is reserved for the women at all the three levels and what is the tenure of the panchayat it is yes, five, years. five years right okay so jati five years what is there 50 percent for women uh, i'm not sure about it okay Got some issues with it. Mm -hmm. Just I have got some issues with the uh, notes. Just wait for a minute. Yes, ma'am, no, so Is my screen visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So what is the tenure of the panchayats? It is five years. five years. So if it is dissolved before five years, what would happen? Let us take for an example. After two years, the panchayat is dissolved. Rest of the year. The rest of the time, Yes. So within six months, we have to conduct an election, and uh, the new panchayat. Would continue for the remaining period and not for five years okay yes 
and the establishment of state election commission for conducting the elections for the panchayats and constitution of state finance commission for reviewing of yes sir jo jetale diesel bhejibo ta pore jetale jo nua se jetale conduct hobo to se jo days guda ko jete majhe jo gap thibo se days guda ko bhi calculate hobo ki na डेज गुड़ाक ना सेमती नुहे जदि पंचायत लेटर से ओडार थ्री फोर्टीन पंचायत समिति रोच रईट भर यदि कहीं डिजल्व होने तो हम नहीं कि सब डिजल्व करेंगे मे भी लेटर से गोटे पंचायत समिति डिजल्व कला रईट तार जो टेन इयर लेटर से आर टू थाउज नाइन टू थाउज ट्वेंटी फोर भितर आर टेन इयर रहा रईट तो ये लेटर से डिजल्व है टू थाउज ट्वेंटी थ्री ओके सो द रिमेनिंग पीरियड जी रहा से टाइम पर ही रही टू थाउज ट्वेंटी फोर जो नुआ इलेक्शन करा हाँ सब पंचायत पे से हम ओके सर से मझे डेज गुड़ा कालकुलेट हम नहीं आई डोट थिंक सो मत लगुन कि कालकुलेट हम जैसे रिमेनिंग पीरियड रहा वन इयर और टू इयर व्हाट एवर इट इज इट विल कन्सीडर फॉर दैट पीरियड ओनली बिकज मैंने नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन जो हम तरह राशनालीटी होता कि नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन जो हम सब सब पंचायत पर जमती एवं आमर चल नेशन वन इलेक्शन जमी कनसेप्ट चलती से से भाई राइट नेक्स्ट पंचायत राज व फर्स्ट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन इंडिया इन विच ऑफ द स्टेट राजस्थान राजस्थान नागौर नागौर डिस्ट्रिक्ट राजस्थान नागौर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओके यस वेरी गुड वेरी गुड एंड व्हेन वाज इट डन 1959. Yes, very good. What was the next state after Rajasthan? Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Andhra Pradesh. It is Andhra Pradesh. So it was first introduced in the Nagaur district of the Rajasthan in 1959. Rajasthan has passed its Panchayat Act in 1953, and it was a three-tier Panchayat Raj system. Okay, and after Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh had introduced this Panchayat Raj system. Okay, very simple question. Next, consider the following statements: The Chief Secretary in a state is appointed by the Governor of that state. The Chief Secretary in a state has a fixed tenure. It was asked in UPSC 2016. And I said neither one nor two. Okay. And there were a lot of confusion regarding the option one. Second option is definitely wrong because the chief secretary doesn't have any fixed tenure, and it was one of the recommendation of the administrative reform commission. to bring in the fixed tenure system for the chief secretary okay so definitely this statement is wrong for first statement it was the chief minister who selects this chief secretary but as the administration of the state is carried out in the name of the governor definitely it would be at the assent of the governor okay so answer is definitely d neither one nor two the chief secretary is chosen by the chief minister but it is taken in the name of the governor of the state because the administration of the state is carried out in the name of the governor okay and administrative reform commission it always recommends fixed tenure for important positions like district collector for chief secretary for dgp of the state okay but till now we haven't implemented it next if a panchayat is dissolved the election are to be held within very simple question 6 months 6 months yes it will be done in 6 months okay the duration of the panchayat is 5 year term okay and fresh elections can be conducted before the expiry of its tenure or in case of dissolution within 6 months okay aur jodi majhe dissolve hala remaining period pe 
करा हब ओके इज इट क्लियर फेयरली सिंपल क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट इन इंडिया द फर्स्ट म्युनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन वाज सेट अप इन व्हिच ऑफ द स्टेट व्हिच ऑफ द सिटी मद्रास सर ओके ऑल ऑफ यू एंड व्हेन वाज इट सेट अप केबे इतला मड्रास आफ्टर दट इट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन बॉम्बे एंड calcutta presidency okay lord ripon is termed as the father of the local self government of india why was so lord ripon ko kahin ki kuha jaye father of the local self government of india uh, sir so, uh, she was magna ke local uh, self government ko introduce kari thi lam 1882 re mm, that mm-hmm. is fine but it was Also introduced way back in 1688 also, so why was he considered as the father of the local self government? Tanko, can you father of the local self government? Who else? Sir, entire nation re se introduce kore thele. Jab ekhi set re 1688 re only Madras re hi set up hi thela. Na set up nu hai. Katha uchi the manner of this local self government. The structure of this local cell government. Lord Ripon said that two-third members are non-official and elected members. Okay, non-official, elected members. Okay, our head we have a non-official. Okay. The principle of election and people's representation goes here promote. Karte le. See, it means that you are the father of the local cell government. Okay. And Government of India Act 1919. इतने कौन टा करा हला ना transfer subjects रे local self government को introduce कर दिया गला. Okay. और 1935 Government of India Act रे similarly local self government को provincial subjects रे रखा गला. Right. I think you would have known it. मैं जेटी की एक्ट्स उड़ा थला तब को बहुत ही डिटेल में कवर करी थी लो इनिशियल क्लासेस उड़ा करा इन केस यू हैव एंड गोन थ्रू इट प्लीज गो टू गो थ्रू डोज लेक्चर्स बिकॉज़ यू हैव कवर्ड एक्सटेंसिवली डोज एक्ट्स राइट नेक्स्ट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन 73 अमेंडमेंट एक्ट व्हिच एम्स एट प्रमोटिंग द पंचायत राज इंस्टीट्यूशन इन द कंट्री प्रोवाइड्स फॉर व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ओके व्हाट अबाउट ऑप्शन 1 डिस्ट्रिक्ट प्लानिंग कमिटी यस वेरी गुड इट वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन 74th अमेंडमेंट यस 243 जेड डी दिस इज 243 के दिस इज 243 आई right so it was introduced by virtue of the 74th amendment act and these are introduced by this 73rd amendment act so what is the purpose of this district planning committee what does it do it consolidates the plans that were prepared by the panchayats and the municipalities okay that is the major activity of this district planning committee and four fifth members are elected by the elected members okay
and the representation of the committee would be in proportion to the rural and urban population of the district because it is an amalgamation of the panchayat system as well as the municipal system okay in panchayat we will have three type panchayat raj system and in municipalities as per the population of the area we will have the accordingly we will have either nagar panchayat or municipalities or municipal corporations okay and the district planning committee would be an amalgamation of the both so definitely the members of the district planning committee would be proportionate to the population of the rural and urban population of the district next with reference to the constitution of india prohibition or limitations or provisions contained in the ordinary law cannot act as prohibition or limitations on the constitutional power under article 142 it could mean which are the following please read the question and answer i have discussed about it a lot of times in our previous classes about article 3 okay. about article 13 thirty two two twenty six one forty one one forty two one thirty six okay mm -hmm. okay do so do you understand by this one forty two can you explain it in simple words सर जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट माने जहा भी तांको डिग्री देबे कि माने ऑर्डर देबे सेटा माने एग्जीक्यूटिव माने इंप्लीमेंट करिया को जो कंपलसरी बाय कम फॉर इंश्योरिंग कंप्लीट जस्टिस यस दैट इज द पॉइंट सो इट गिव्स एग्जीक्यूटिव पावर टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ओके गुडा मैं भूली के मरण हो छे मैं आंसर दो छे भटरा भटरा चटरा चटरा हो छे वाला प्लीज म्यूट योर mike <laughs> okay so it gives uh, executive power uh, to the supreme court right so and which article gives uh, legislative power to the supreme court that is article 141 law declared by the supreme court would be binding upon all, all other courts okay so for ensuring complete justice the supreme court has the power to ensure uh, to enforce its decree okay so let us discuss about it Article one forty two of the Indian Constitution deals with enforcement of decree and orders by the Supreme Court. Orders are to discover, etc. Okay, to or ensuring complete justice for any cause or matter pending before it. Okay, so when the Supreme Court has any matter pending, and to ensure complete justice, he can pass some order or decree, and it. Okay, these are the basis of judicial activism. Okay. I have already discussed about it. Article thirteen. These are the basis of judicial activism. Whenever you find any question regarding judicial activism, please quote all these articles. Okay. And uh, while uh, writing any answer about the governor or about the central state relation, please uh, write the recommendations of the Sarkaria and the Punchi Commission that we have discussed in the question number one. that we can do okay so as an example we can see in union carbide case what the supreme court has done it has overruled the laws made by the parliament to provide relief by awarding the compensation to the victims okay and the decision of the election comes if there is an electoral dispute who will uh, uh, i mean who will have the jurisdiction over it yes high court will have high the court. jurisdiction over it yes and article 360 what does it do it is the power of the president to proclaim financial emergency okay in india in complete india or any part of the territory okay 
and as per article 196 the state legislature can make laws in the state list as well as the concurrent list this is the legislative power of the state legislature next under the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act this is forest rights act okay who shall have the authority to initiate the proceeds for determining the nature and extent of individual and community forest rights or both okay yes yes it is the power of the gram sabha okay gram sabha will initiate the process and then it will go to the tehsil level and then it will go to the district level okay first the gram sabha makes recommendation that is who has been cultivating the land for how long and which minor produce is minor forest produce is collected okay and after that it will go through two stages of screening that is at the tehsil level and at the district level next the government has enacted this pesa act for all of you please participate okay so which option you are eliminating not exactly third it is actually fourth okay to free the tribal people from exploitation that is not the provision of this waste act it is meant for uh, providing democratic decentralization to the tribal people do not confuse it with uh, the autonomous regions of the fifth schedule and the sixth schedule areas okay the spirit of the question doesn't uh, is not uh, like that okay so this is definitely removed and by removing that we are left with the one two and three options okay so this part 9 of the constitution is not applicable to the fifth schedule area okay so to provide democratic decentralization to those areas the parliament has enacted this space act that is provision of panchayat extension to scheduled areas i think you people might have been aware of the states which are under the uh, in which we have scheduled areas Please remember the name of the states. Yes, only seven or ten. I think it is ten. Ten, sir. Yes, it is ten. Ten, ten, sir. Okay. Acha. Only seven applied paisa, and rest three have not done it or what?
am i audible right now yes sir okay तर हमें ऑडिबल राइट नाउ इस सर इस ओके सो पीपल्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन द डेवलपमेंट दैट इज डेफिनेटली वन ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द पंचायत राज सिस्टम पॉलिटिकल अकाउंटेबिलिटी we have certain other tools for political accountability and uh, like rti citizens charter and all okay social audit those things panchayat raj system is not necessarily is the one that we need for this uh, political accountability democratic decentralization definitely this is the one financial mobilization though the local self governments are best of with a few taxes and powers but that is definitely not the reason why it has been established okay so the correct answer would be 1 and 3 option c okay sir yes sir jo three option achi sir <coughs> sir jo political accountability achi seta sir jo khat panchayat rochi jo ta ki panchayati raj under bhi se taku ye khat panchayat raj under nahi khat panchayat ta informal body किंतु सर कितने जाए रे खात पहुंचा है तुमको मैंने लीगल लीगलाइज करा ही ची सर आह आई एम नॉट शेयर अबाउट इट आई थिंक सेवेंटी थर्ड अमेंडमेंट रे तो खात पहुंचा तो सिंधी किसी मेंशन नहीं सिर्फ नॉर्थ इंडिया के तरफ स्टेट रे समानों का इनफॉर्मल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मैंने पहुंचा तो सिस्टम हबा पुरवरु मे� it is a kind of pressure group but this is not a formal organization the ban bhi kora hai ji bahut jagah re okay sir okay so this is a fairly simple question next consider the following statements the minimum age prescribed for any person to be a member of the panchayat is 25 years a panchayat is reconstituted after premature dissolution continues only for the remainder periods Yes. Only two, sir. Fairly simple question. This is twenty-one years, right? And we have already discussed about it. If a panchayat is uh, dissolved before uh, the completion of the five-year term, the new panchayat constituted after that would only continue for the remainder period. Next. Which of the following are the objectives of the Commission for Agricultural Cost and Prices? CAC Pira objectives con. Okay. At this point of time, we do not need this elimination method. Only when you are confused about the options, at that point you can have this elimination method. Okay. Yes, for sugarcane we have FRP, fair and remunerative price, and this CACP decides MSP for how many crops? For how many crops we have MSP? minimum support price yes for 23 crops okay so the ones which are advantages of the msp can be quoted okay to stabilize the agricultural prices this is correct to ensure meaningful real income level to the farmers this is correct to protect the interests of the consumers by providing essential agricultural commodities at reasonable rates through pds okay to ensure maximum price for the farmer this is not the case because if the price is too high 
then uh, the consumer would be at the disadvantage so definitely it would be a okay the objective of the cscp is to decide this msp how many crops do we procure based on this msp we have msp for 23 crops right but open procurement is there for how many crops Segmenting, I'm not sure. Open procurement, I think it is only there for rice and wheat. But do you understand where this open procurement? I mean, whatever is the amount of crop that is being brought by the farmer to the mandi, the government will procure it. Okay, there will not be any quantity restriction. That is known as open procurement. I think it is only for uh, two crops. Am I correct or not? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Next. Consider the following statements regarding uh, NHRC. Please answer this question. Okay. This chairman must be a retired chief justice of India. Whether it is correct or not. Yes, sir. No. Okay. What is the correct answer? The serving be Yes. Serving uh, justice. No, sir. Serving no. It can be a judge of the Supreme Court. Okay. And if uh, he is a serving justice, a serving judge of the Supreme Court, then CJ has to permit it, right? So definitely, this is not the correct answer. This is wrong. It exists in each state as State Human Rights Commission. NHRC is a statutory body, right? Based on which Act? Protection of Human Rights Act, right? And Protection of Human Rights Act has mentioned this NHRC as well as SHRC. SHRC is a separate organization from this NHRC and its jurisdiction is limited to the subjects which are there in the state list and in the concurrent list. Okay. So it is not an extension of this NHRC. So it is written like it exists in each state as SHRC. This is wrong. NHRC is a separate organ, SHRC is a separate organ. Their jurisdictions are different. Okay. Its power are only recommended in nature. This is correct. It's mandatory to appoint a woman as the member of the commission. This is correct. So answer would be B, only two. Who else are the ex officio members of the NHRC? Yes, commission takes that. Uh, yes. It can take up a case only if it has happened within one year. Okay. So definitely it is a toothless organization. If you are to write any answer regarding NHRC, yes, toothless tiger, it is not a tiger, first of all. It doesn't have any claws. Okay. Because its powers are only recommendary in nature. Had it been, uh, had it have some power like contempt of court and all, it would have been a tiger. Okay. Next. Toothless fox, it's nothing. First of all, okay. So let us discuss about it. NHRC is a multi-member body. The chairperson should be a retired chief justice or a judge of the Supreme Court. Okay. The members could either be a retired judge of the Supreme Court 
or a retired chief justice of the high court and three persons should have special knowledge about human rights okay and one should be women and these are the ex officio members who are those chairperson of national commission of minorities national commission for sc national commission for st national commission for backward classes national commission for women national commission for protection of child rights and chief commissioner for persons with disabilities this is fairly simple to remember next along with the budget the finance minister also places the other documents before the parliament which include the macroeconomic framework statement this statement is mandated by which act which act or which article of the constitution the question is about the macroeconomic framework statement it is not about the annual financial statement do not confuse it with annual financial statement okay so definitely the answer is frvm act okay the answer is d okay next the consultative committee of the member of parliament for railway zones is constituted by whom okay how many railway zones do we have in india 17 or 19 for 19 19 body yes and uh, yes as uh, mentioned by most of you it is the ministry of the parliamentary affairs okay who is the current minister of this parliamentary affairs you should go ahead. is kolar prahlad joshi sir as you is going also the rajya sabha ministry of parliamentary affairs i think it is prahlad joshi sir lok sabha prahlad joshi hotundi okay okay fine thank you please uh, cross check it okay. so we have this advisory committee for each zone of the railway and with mp's elected from the boundary of the respective zones we have 19 railway zones so the member of parliaments belonging to each of the zones would prepare this uh, would form this advisory committee okay it is a forum for informal discussion between the government and the members of the parliament on the policies and programs of the government and the manner of their implementation okay next which one of the following statement is not correct fairly simple question if you use elimination method use a common sense and answer it Okay. Use your common sense and answer it. In UPSC, the manner of question they are asking in these days, I would say, out of hundred question, you would be able to answer maybe around only thirty or forty question with seventy eighty percent accuracy. 
but you have to attempt at least 80 to 90 questions to clear UPSC prelims. Okay. So this kind of question would come as a surprise in the examination hall. And during that, you have to apply your common sense and attempt it. OK. So let us read about it. The Press Council of India, uh, first thing. The Press Council of India is an autonomous quasi-judicial body established under an act of the parliament. Let us say we don't know about it. Let us say, and then Press Information Bureau provides for accreditation to media persons so as to have EGI system. Okay. Among all the states of India, Maharashtra publishes the largest number of newspapers. Do you think this is the correct one? Maharashtra is not the most popular state of India, right? Yes. It is UP. Because definitely the number of newspapers published in a state would be proportionate to its population. That is what the trend in India is. So by applying a bit of common sense, and in most of the cases in UPSC, these type of factual questions are wrong. If something is clearly mentioned like this, it would be wrong. OK. So rest of the statements are correct. This Press Trust of India is the largest news agency in the country. This is correct. It is a cooperative organization. Organization. Press Council of India, this is definitely a quasi-judicial body. This is formed by an act of the parliament and a retired judge of Supreme Court would be its chairman. Okay. And this PIB provides accreditation to media persons so as to have easy information, access to information from the government sources. This is a fairly generic statement. This would be correct. Next. UP publishes the largest number of newspapers in India. That is 21,482. Fairly huge. Next. The Archaeological Survey of India is an attached office of the of which department, of which ministry? Regime, sir. What is the function of the Archaeological Survey of India? What does it do? The preserve uh, and uh, archaeological monument, conserve and preserve. Yes, preservation, restoration of our heritage sites. This is under the Ministry of Culture. Okay. It was established in 1861. Okay. Next. Consider the following statements. Dispute with mobile cellular companies, motor accident cases, pension cases. Which of the following, which of the above are Lok Adalat held? I mean, what is, uh, which cases can be solved by this Lok Adalat? Fairly simple question. In our last class, we have uh, discussed in detail about uh, the Lok Adalats, right? The one who has attended the last class would have known. We have discussed in detail about the judiciary. And in judiciary, we have discussed in detail about the subordinate courts, local adalats, and all. OK. So definitely, all are correct. Can local adalat entertain a case which is uh, compoundable in nature? Yes, sir. What do you understand by a compoundable offense? Compromise is a very good Yes. So, Lok Adalat cannot take up a matter which is non compoundable in nature. Non compoundable criminal cases. Okay. Beyond that, almost all the cases the Lok Adalat can take up. Okay. And Lok Adalat is a statutory body under this Legal Services Authorities Act. Okay. 
and the decision of the lok sabha would be termed as a decree of the civil court and is final you do not have any power to appeal against the against its uh, decree only in the exceptional cases you can use the writ jurisdiction of high court which article talks about the writ jurisdiction of the high court do you such have this yes okay next there is no provision in the constitution of india to encourage equal pay for equal work for men and women the constitution of india does not define backward classes which one is correct fairly simple question Okay. which article of the constitution talks about it definitely the constitution has provision for this and definitely the constitution does not define uh, this one so answer is b okay which article of the constitution talks about equal pay for equal work sir 39d yes 41 sir 39d it's 39d okay This Article Thirteen and D of DPSP talks about equal pay for equal work. Okay. Article Three Forty talks about OBCs, but it doesn't define them. Whenever you find a question which talks about any definition in the Constitution, be rest assured that it is false. Okay. Constitution normally doesn't uh, uh, doesn't define anything. Okay. Next. In Article Three Sixty Six, you can find a few definitions. Beyond that, you do not have anything. Okay. A Metropolitan Planning Committee. Please answer this one. okay even if you don't know anything about it you can use uh, elimination method yes solve okay first it is constituted under the provision of the constitution of india it is correct it is in which article of which uh, amendment 74th amendment which article 74 243 jd remember the articles of the metropolitan planning committee district planning committee state election commission and state finance commission and gram sabha those are important articles remember the article numbers for it for them okay it prepares draft development plan for the metropolitan area this is correct it has the sole responsibility for implementing government sponsored schemes in the metropolitan area this is wrong this cannot be the sole responsibility of the metropolitan planning committee we have multiplicity of the authorities working at the uh, city level if you talk about delhi we have uh, delhi development uh, new delhi metropolitan uh, council uh, we have delhi development authority we have delhi state government we have uh, urban affairs ministry a lot of agencies are responsible for implementing the government sponsored schemes so that cannot be the sole responsibility of this metropolitan planning committee okay this article 243 jd talks about the metropolitan planning committee it is constituted under the provisions of the constitution of india that is 74th amendment okay every metropolitan area shall have a metropolitan planning committee to prepare draft development plan this is its activity next this is public accounts committee please read it and answer
okay yes fairly simple question it consists of not more than 15 members from lok sabha this is wrong it is 15 plus 7 15 from lok sabha 7 from rajya sabha okay scrutinization the appropriation and finance accounts this is correct examines the report of cag this is also correct what is the mode of election of the members of the public accounts committee uh, uh, proportional representation with single transferable vote yes and uh, who is uh, normally the chairman of this public accounts committee as for the convention mm -hmm. opposition it, party leader, leader of opposition it, it would be from the opposition party, not leader of opposition. It would be from the opposition party. Okay. Who is the current chairman of the PAC? I think it is Ajay Ranjan Choudhury. Nine, sir. It's Ajay Ranjan Choudhury. Okay. Yes, it is Ajay Ranjan Choudhury. What is the tenure of the member of the Public Accounts Committee? One year. And if you have to write any answer in mains about the PSC, you just code that one. That is one of the major disadvantage of the Public Accounts Committee. Its role is postmortem in nature. It only examines the report of the CAG. Okay. 1990. Yes. That was the genesis. Government of India Act 1919. I think it was formed in 1921. Right. Yes, sir. Only so many actors are still only so. Yes. Okay. We already discussed about. Okay. Next. Consider the following statements about particularly vulnerable tribal groups in India. Okay. What do you understand by this particularly vulnerable tribal groups? Who are they? There are certain uh, points based on which uh, we decide whether tribes are PVTG or not. Okay. We'll discuss about it. Low economic growth, okay. And, uh, stagnant population. I will discuss about it. Okay, technology. PBTG is reside in 18 states and one union territory. This is correct. Which union territory? Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Okay, Andaman. stagnant and declining population is one of the criteria for determining the PBTG status. Yes, it is one of the criteria. There are 92 PBTGs officially notified in the country so far. This is wrong. This is 75. Right. Irula and Kondaredi tribes are included in the list of the PBTGs. Yes, this is correct. Okay. So let us discuss about it. Which state has uh, most number of PBTGs among this 75? Odisha. Sir, Odisha 13. Yes, Odisha 13. So, if you have to, if you have to appear the interview of the OPSC, please uh, go through the PBTGs. That would be a sure question in OPSC interview. Okay. So let us discuss about it. The PBTG is a category or is a special category of tribes, and this Devar Commission has set the criteria for it. Okay. Pre-agricultural level of technology. What do you understand by it? That is they are nomads. Nomadic lifestyle. Okay. Hunting and gather. Hunter and hunters and gatherers. Okay. Low level of literacy, economic backwardness, 
a declining or stagnant population you would have known about it like in andaman and nicobar islands many of the pbtgs they have this uh, declining population okay there are total 75 tribal groups in this pbtg okay they reside in 18 union territories and the unions uh, 18 states and utf andaman nicobar islands okay konda ready ready from telangana the yes, sentinel is the sentinel is something yes okay irular of tamil nadu can you name a few pbtgs of odisha sir juang kutia 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 dogria kan mankadia yes uh, at least remember of unions um, yes yes anthals uh, i don't think shitya so. bujia anthals or not no sir santal no so yes yeah, santals in jharkhand not in odisha have you heard about this dongria kan tribes yes sir yes in which case in which case is you niyamgiri sir niyamgiri 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 one very good next as per the industrial employment standing orders the central on amendment rules please go through this question and answer using your common sense Please answer this question using your common sense. In examination, in particularly UPSC, in these years, you will find many questions like this. And this is also from our UPSC paper only. see currently the government has done some labor reforms right so currently kon thala government kisi kisi se labor reforms anu chi right for improving the ease of doing business of india amar sabut bada problem aguru kon thara hoichi labor laws goda kare so india are around any industrial organization jodi 100 ru एबोव जदि तमरो वर्कर्स तो छथि टू रिट्रेंच ए न्यू वर्कर दे हैव टू टेक द परमिशन फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट इटसेल्फ व्हिच वुड बी क्वाइट डिफिकल्ट सो दे कैन नॉट यूज हायर एंड फायर पॉलिसी राइट सो दैट वाज द रीजन व्हाई ग्रेजुअली आवर कंपनीज हैव शिफ्टेड टू इनफॉर्मलाइजेशन ऑफ लेबर्स दैट इज कॉन्ट्रैक्चुअलाइजेशन ऑफ लेबर्स ओके सो द गवर्नमेंट हैज कम आउट विद अ फ्यू लेबर कोड्स रिसेंटली to bring about a few reforms first but the recently as it labor reform act at what what type of okay if rules for fixed term employment are implemented it becomes easier for the firms to lay off the workers fixed term employment let us say got a worker one year tar term diya hai okay to one year sala par se automatically industry bahar hi jibo okay taku kono se notice diya jibo nahi that is what so this is correct next no notice of termination shall be necessary in case of temporary workmen this is also like that temporary man contractual type of workmen so normally in that type of reforms have been introduced kara ho chi labor code re jemti ki industries code of hire and fire policy use kari paribe okay like india re kon ta ho chi services sector like it and all they are not subjected to the labor codes okay and then tankara majority recruitment executive grades rahe non executive grades ke like technician grades to hue nahi okay but industrial core industries bada kare se mane worker uh, grade re bahut recruitment karanti to tanku ei type ra darkar to india ko manufacturing progress jodi amku like uh, man, uh, the percentage of manufacturing jodi gdp ra badhe ra achi to ei type ra labor reforms darkar okay 
तो कॉमन सेंस यूज कर एटा करी हबो अदरवाइज इट इज अ प्योरली फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन इफ यू नो इट यू नो इट इफ यू डोंट नो इट यू डोंट नो इट तो नो वर्कर एम्प्लॉयड इन अ फिक्स्ड टर्म एम्प्लॉयमेंट शाल बी एंटाइटल्ड टू एनी नोटिस और पे ओके यार फिक्स्ड टर्म एम्प्लॉयमेंट लेट अस वन ईयर एम्प्लॉयमेंट हुई छ तो वन ईयर एम्प्लॉयमेंट पर तो किसी नोटिस हो दरकार नहीं ओके यदि नॉन रिन्यूअल हो गेला इट विल बी टर्मिनेटेड and so the same will hold true for the temporary workman next as uh, please read it and answer it it is about compensatory afforestation campa This is a bit difficult question. You cannot answer it simply by using your common sense. Okay. If you know it precisely, then only you can answer. So, compensatory afforestation fund. The definitely. we have two authorities at the national and at the state level okay first of all uh, what do you understand by this uh, compensatory afforestation what do you understand by it सर जो इंडस्ट्री हला जदि से माने कोनो से माने फॉरेस्ट्री जगह रे माने गछ काटी के किछ करू चन ताहेले से माने माने सेति की मात्रा रे से माने गछ लगे की तब ये करू यस दे हैव टू कंपलसरीली अफॉरेस्टेड सिमिलर एरिया ओके ऑफ जदि गोटे एरिया रे किछ फॉरेस्ट नहीं सिमिलर एरिया रे करिवे ओके आ जदि गोटे जार डिग्रेडेड फॉरेस्ट फॉरेस्ट से छि ताहे ट्वाइस द एरिया से माने करिवे ओके So let us read more about it. First, statement one is correct. Statement two is wrong. Okay, the answer is A. And uh, we'll discuss about it. People participation is not mandatory. Okay. Next, this compensatory operation fund fund it receives money from the people or the organization or the industries who divert forest land for non forest usage. Okay. यदि किसी लेटर से इंडस्ट्री वाला से मन लेटर से 1000 एकर्स लैंड अपीयर कर ले फॉरेस्ट लैंड ओके सो दे हैव टू गिव मनी फॉर कॉम्पेंसेटरी अफॉरेस्टेशन फॉर इक्वल अमाउंट ऑफ एरिया ओके तो यदि फॉरेस्ट लैंड टा नॉन फॉरेस्ट यूज पे डाइवर्ट करा हो छी द एजेंसी हैज टू पे फॉर प्लांटिंग द फॉरेस्ट ओवर एन इक्वल एरिया ऑफ नॉन फॉरेस्ट लैंड नॉन फॉरेस्ट लैंड रो इक्वल एरिया करा हबो तो यदि डिग्रेडेड फॉरेस्ट हेतिबो ताहलो ट्वाइस एरिया करा हबो ओके तो आरो दीटा अथॉरिटी अछि गोटे स्टेट लेवल ले गोटे नेशनल लेवल ले नेशनल लेवल अछि नेशनल कॉम्पेंसेटरी अफॉरेस्टेशन फंड और स्टेट रो अछि स्टेट कॉम्पेंसेटरी अफॉरेस्टेशन फंड और एटा रो अछि पब्लिक अकाउंट्स ऑफ इंडिया ओके नॉट कंसोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया रिमेंबर यस यस द परसेंटेज नेशन इट इज 10% एंड फॉर स्टेट इट इज 90% ऑफ द फंड would be embarked okay the authority which it is national and state compensatory afforestation fund management and planning authorities there is no mention of mandatory people's participation so the option is jadi exactly jani thibo hi thik kari pari otherwise both kari ki bhul hoi jiwar chances achi okay to environment related jethi sab thik acts uda ko achi taku tikke carefully padhibar achi detail le normally emti pade जमी फरेस्ट रईट्स आक्ट गोटे क्रिटिकल वाइल्ड लाइफ एरिया बोली गोटे अच्छी विषय भी थोड़ा पड़ी था यूपीएससी नेक्स्ट विथ रेफरेंस टू एमपी लैट्स फंड विच आर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट सिंपल क्वेश्चन
okay normally in case of budget what happens jodi gote barsar budget ra fund jodi se barsar utilize na hala seta lapse kari jibo okay but mplats mplats ra mane kon first prati mp manu kichu de funds diya jaye local area ra development kare pai right to sei ta huchi लेखा कौन एम पी लैड फंड सर सैंक्शन ऑन ईयरली बेसिस एंड ऑन यूज फंड कैन नॉट बी कैरेड फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट ईयर दिस इज रॉन्ग इट कैन बी कैरेड फॉरवर्ड ओके तो ये क्वेश्चन ये ऑप्शन टा हो रंग बजेट नर्माली कौन टा हुए गोटे फाइनेसियल इयर सरला से फंड लाप्स कर जाए एम पी लैड फंड हुए फंड लाप्स कै ना ओके तो क्यारि फरवर्ड हुए so this is the catch of the question rest all the statements are correct so answer is d okay first the objective of the scheme is to recommend works for developmental nature for creating durable community assets okay so tar criteria achi specific ko ko assets creation pai sada use hoi paribo specifically sei thi pai kebal fund embark kari hobo okay arbitrarily kari hobo ne तो सेड्यूल्ड कास्ट पॉपुलेशन पे 15 परसेंट फंड और 7.5 परसेंट फंड एसटी पॉपुलेशन पे तंगो एम्बर करा हुज ओके दिस इज करेक्ट एम्पिलाइड फंड ता कैरी फॉरवर्ड हे परिवा नेक्स्ट ईयर को नेक्स्ट डिस्ट्रिक्ट अथॉरिटी डिस्ट्रिक्ट अथॉरिटी एक्चुअली कोंटा हो एतरे एमपी रेकमेंड करन दी प्रोजेक्ट्स वडा को तो एज पर द एलिजिबिलिटी डिस्ट्रिक्ट अथॉरिटी विल एग्जीक्यूट द वर्क ओके तो से माने अराउंड 10% वर्क को इंस्पेक्ट करि परिबे एंड दे कैन इन्वॉल्व द एपीस इन ईच सच इंस्पेक्शंस ओके नेक्स्ट व्हिच वन अमंग द फॉलोइंग कमीशन वाज सेट अप इन पर्सनस ऑफ अ डेफिनेट प्रोविजन अंडर एन आर्टिकल ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया व्हाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय इट it means which one among the following is a constitutional body okay so definitely fairly simple this is election commission this is a statutory body this is a statutory body this is also a statutory body okay cbc was initially a statutory body or not whether it was a statutory body initially or not no yes no yes yes after supreme court ruling only the central government has passed the cbc act yes the ugc act we all know the statutory body nhrc we have discussed about it protection of human rights act 1993 okay and article 324 it talks about the power of superintendents direction and control of the elections of parliament state legislature office of the president of india and office of the vice president of india okay the local self government ra ki election conduct karanti state state election commission okay the election commission of india je rahuchanti sir jo d se mane local self government ra election conduct karibe nahi okay please speak kon hala सर जो डी लिमिटेशन कमिशन बसियो सेटा जो माने हमर सेंसस परे होबो सेटा कोन इलेक्शन कमिशन करियो ना सेटा डिफरेंट सेटा ओडा एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट रे करा भाई डी लिमिटेशन कमिशन दैट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द सिलेक्शन कमिशन एड हॉक कम सेटा डिफरेंट नेक्स्ट व्हिच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ द इलेक्शन प्रोसेस इन इंडिया Read the question carefully, then only you would be able to answer it. I have said, read the question carefully and then answer it. Read the question again and answer it. Read all the options. Hmm. 
normally in the heat of the examination what we do we normally don't read the question carefully and that is why we miss out in three four questions every in every examination okay so normally jetali ame exam dau chu question ta ko thoroughly padiba ta sabutu important senti hele hi ame options eliminate kari pariba okay yes so as most of you have answered in your second attempt the answer would be c the recommendation is made by the election commission but the notification is issued by the president or the governors of the state okay that is the process the recommendation for election is made by the election commission of india and the notification for the election is issued by the president and the governor of the state concerned okay next consider the following functionaries the correct sequence in the order of precedence what do you understand by the order of precedence order of precedence mane kon उंसमेंट स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली रे रिजोल्यूशन पास करा हुए डिजल करे पे आई थिंक दैट इज द वे ओके सो आंसर इज डेफिनेटली 4321 इज अ कॉमन सेंस यूज कर के कर हो ओके ताका भीतर डेफिनेटली लागू छ कि चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया अंकर प्रेसिडेंस बेसी थी बो ओके तो चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर सीसी तो तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी रो हेड तो डेफिनेटली तांका प्रेसिडेंट्स तो कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी अबव ही दिबो कने योर एग्जीक्यूटिव बॉडी ओके दिस इज प्योरली फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन बट वी हैव टू यूज योर कॉमन सेंस व्हाइल सॉल्विंग इट ओके सो आई हैव मेंशनड दिस ऑर्डर ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट्स दैट अ बहुत बडो लिस्ट होची एते मन रखे दरकार नी फर्स्ट पांच छटा मन रखे देले बेटर प्रेसिडेंट वाइस प्रेसिडेंट तापर प्राइम मिनिस्टर ओके तो प्राइम मिनिस्टर को थर्ड रे रहउछ तापर गवर्नर ऑफ द स्टेट्स हां एटा फैक्ट भारत रत्न इज डेफिनेटली अबव द जज ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट तो अदर बहुत लंबा लिस्ट अछि मो एतरे केतरा अल्प तरह ही रखि छी ओके तो एमती ही देखि कि किछटा करि हबो ओके डेप्यूटी पीएम कर त प्रेसिडेंट से तळे ही रहउछ छी ओके तो गवर्नर ऑफ स्टेट को तळे ही डेप्यूटी प्राइम मिनिस्टर रहउछन ओके लॉजिक तो सेंती किछि नाही बट मोते लागु छि जो माने डी जीरो एग्जीक्यूटिव जो माने नोमिनल हेड से माने ऑर्डर ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट्स रे ऊपर रहउछन दे लाइक प्रेसिडेंट हले गवर्नर ऑफ द स्टेट्स प्रेसिडेंट रहले प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऊपर रे गवर्नर ऑफ द स्टेट रहले चीफ मिनिस्टर ऊपर रे ओके से टाइप रा में किछि भाबि परिवा अदरवाइज एंती किछि लॉजिक तो नहीं नेक्स्ट कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट विद रेफरेंस टू इंडिया प्लीज आंसर इट वी स्टिल हैव 10 मोर क्वेश्चंस लेफ्ट फॉर टुडे सेशन okay so which one statement are correct as per you two out three 
Okay. Yes. Yes. First one, chief election commission and other election commissioners enjoy equal powers but receive unequal salary. This is wrong. They receive equal salary. Next, chief election commissioner is entitled to same salary as is provided to the judge of the Supreme Court. This is correct. Chief election commissioners shall not be removed from the office except in like manner on like grounds as a judge of the Supreme Court. This is also correct. What about other election commissioners? The total thing you know, right? CEC plus two election commissioners okay. on the recommendation of the chief election commissioner. Definitely, the constitution is a bit silent about it because the two election commissioners were added later on. Agar voting is still at 21, jata jata come again 18 kar diya galas, jata bolle audi jono election commission add diya. So original constitution is definitely taanga visar kisu details se nahi. Or kya bolle workload ko deal kare apni se mera add kara hale. So taanga ra removal upar definitely the constitution is a bit silent about it. So it would be based on the recommendation of the CC. If the term term is six years and it is sixty five years. Okay. Fairly simple. So they receive equal salary and they have equal powers. Okay. A chief election commissioner, what is this? Primus inter pares, first among the equals. That is what? No, no, that is not the case. That is the case with the prime minister. Okay. Prime minister is the first among the equals. Yes. Primus inter pares. That is first among the equals. That is the case of the prime minister. Okay. Oh, in case of difference of opinion, it would be decided on the basis of majority. Okay. So they have the security of tenure. They can be removed only in the manner as it is the case with the judges of the Supreme Court. Next. Please read this question and answer it. All of you, please answer. Okay. That is why I always say, read the question carefully. Otherwise, you will miss one of few points. And in case of UPSC, every single question is important. Because if the cutoff is, let us say, 90 mark, between 85 and 95, whole population of UPSC aspirants would be there. OK. So in the borderline, those one or two questions matter. So it is important that whenever you attempt any question in MCQ based papers, read the question thoroughly. OK. So first one, it is correct. Superintendence, direction, and control conduct of free and fair elections. This is clearly written in Article 3.4. Next. Preparation of electoral laws for the elections of parliament, state legislature, officer president, and vice president. This is also mentioned in this 324, giving recognition to political parties, alerting election symbols to political parties and individuals contesting in the election. This is also correct. Proclamation of final verdict in case of election disputes. Initially, it will be taken care of by the election commission. But after that, it will go to the high court and then it can go to the Supreme Court, okay? So election disputes, actually the High Court would uh, entertain it, okay? And appellate jurisdiction lies with the Supreme Court, okay?
as per the constitution of india the state legislature can form uh, can uh, actually form a tribunal for settlement of the election disputes okay and the appeal to the jurisdiction uh, to the decree of the tribunal lies with the high court okay and appeal to the high court lies with the supreme court okay that is the constitutional provision initially the state legislature should form a tribunal the dispute would go to there and after that it would go to the high court and then it will go to the supreme court that is the process but in most of the states they haven't formed this tribunal that's why high court directly looks after the election related disputes yes billy thomas case next fairly simple question please answer yes fairly simple question union territories are definitely represented delhi and puducherry they are represented how many union territories do we have in india kaise union territory achhe hai acha 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 okay agar 7 ta union territory thilla okay ladakh adhala jammu and kashmir adhala to not hoga ga ta 8 ta ke hala dadra nagar havli ki misi diya hala diamond use ho yes yes very good very good so definitely this is wrong it is within the purview of the chief election commission to adjudicate election dispute this will come to the high court okay next according to the constitution of india parliament consists of lok sabha rajya sabha only no plus president president okay a fairly simple question school time we had a podi asche next delhi and puducherry they are represented in rajya sabha election related disputes are dealt with supreme court and high court okay. got a case till i think supreme court ra chandra kumar case i think sei tar supreme court verdict deithile election related disputes ta high court ko asya katha tar supreme court ko asya katha नेक्स्ट तर यूनियन टेरिटरी रो केते जण ऑप्शन दि राज्य सभा नॉट श्योर अबाउट इट श्योर नो चेक कर दियो निजे ना दिल्ली रो सारे तीनटा पुडुचेरी रो गोटे जम्मू कश्मीर तो नाही चारटा तला जम्मू कश्मीर रो तो वर्तमान पोस्टपोन हो ही यस ताक तो स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर रो फॉर्मेशन ही ना यस द इलेक्शन इज पेंडिंग तो ए पर्यंत करा हे नी ना तंकर इलेक्शन हेला परे हि त तोर स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर जुडा अछि से स्टेट बाय यूनियन टेरिटरी रे जो लेजिस्लेचर रहिबो त से राज्यसभा को नोमिनेट करिवो दैट इलेक्ट करिवो सर राज्यसभा के जानसो दिस क्वेश्चन fairly simple question election commission is a three member body right union minister for home affairs decides the election schedule we have already discussed the election schedule is prepared by the election commission okay and it is announced by the president and governor of the states election disputes would definitely be dealt with the election commission regarding split and merger of the recognized political parties can you cite an example currently ebe jo maharashtra re maharashtra sibhasana vibha dekhidala chinde government au thakre jo achanti sir tanko bitre dispute chali chi na supreme court re yes yes the election commission to tam verdict dei dei chanti vartan supreme court re achhe same thing examples nei paribo election commission wala tatra high court tatra supreme court that is the hierarchy next 
CAG. Please read it and answer. Fairly long question. Read it carefully. Okay, which options are correct as for you? Which options are correct? Yes, 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 very good. CAG exercises control on behalf of the parliament when president of India declares national emergency or financial emergency. This is not the case. The parliament itself deals with it. Okay. Next, CAG reports on execution of projects by ministries and are discussed by the Public Accounts Committee. Definitely. CAG acts as a front philosopher and guide to the PSC. The reports of the CAG are examined by this PSC. Okay. Next, information from CAG reports can be used by investigating agencies to press charges against those who have violated law while managing the public finances. Can you cite an example for it? Yes, very good. To just come. It was the presumptive loss that was there in the CAG report that around 1.76 lakh crore money was lost in 2G spectrum auction. That was the basis on which the licenses were cancelled. Yes. Yamuna expressed it, mainly 2G coal gets come. That was the case. While dealing with audit and accounting of government companies, CAG has certain judicially, judicial powers for prosecuting those who violate the law. It doesn't have these powers to prosecute the offenders. It cannot do it. Okay. Because, yes, only post-mortem audit it can do. Only recommendary in nature. It's uh, reports, it's recommendations. Okay. Yes. It can only recommend. It cannot take any action against anyone. So during financial emergency, the executive authority of the center extends to directing any state to observe such canons of financial proprietary as specified by it. Okay. So financial emergency and the center state could direct financial proprietary career pay. Okay. Next, public accounts committee it examines the audit report of CAG. After it is laid out in the parliament. Okay. And CAG acts as a friend, philosopher, and guide to this PSC. Okay. CAG report to parliamentary key place currently. President. Okay. President. President. Okay. And what about PSC? President. Now, PAC is the president of the PAC. The PAC is correct. The report is correct. Please mute your mic. The post is the post. 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 Please mute your mic while attending a class. <laughs> Next. While dealing with the audit. With and accounting of the government and PSU, CAG does not have any judicial powers. Okay. Next. According to the Constitution of India, it is the duty of the President of India to cause to be laid before the Parliament which of the following. I have already hinted about the answer in the previous question, right? Yes. Union Finance Commission, definitely the President of India causes to be led 
before the parliament okay pac it itself does it cag and national commission for scheduled caste any commission like that any constitutional bodies those reports would definitely be introduced in the parliament by the president of india okay so the answer is this fairly simple consider the following statements about the attorney general of india okay fairly simple question who is the current attorney general of india who is the current attorney general of india very good har venkat ramani He is appointed by the president of India, definitely, and his tenure is subjected to the pleasure of the president. He must have the same qualification as the judges of the Supreme Court. We'll discuss about it. He must be a member of the parliament. It is not the case. He can be removed by the impeachment of the president. Parliament. This is not the case. Okay. He is appointed by the president and he holds office till the pleasure of the president. Okay. So the answer would be A. Article seventy-six. It talks about the Attorney General of India. He is the highest law officer of the country. This is the single line definition of Attorney General of India. Okay. He is appointed by the President. He should be qualified to be appointed as the judges of judge of the Supreme Court. Okay. The Supreme Court judge has to have the qualification. Okay. That means the qualification is required. So, who is required? That is five years. कौन से गोटे हाईकोर्टर आडभोकेट होता दरकार ओके सरी जज अफ द हाईकोर्ट हाँ दरकार फाइव इयर्स कि आडभोकेट अफ सम अदर कोर्ट हाँ दरकार टेन इयर्स ओके टेन इयर्स आज आडभोकेट अफ द हाईकोर्ट और फाइव इयर्स आज द जज अफ द हाईकोर्ट ओके सो दैट शुड बी हिज क्वाफिकेसन तो हिज टेन इयर इज सब्जेक्टेड टू द प्लेजर अफ द प्रेसिडेंट एज इट वॉज द केस विद द गवर्नर So he has the right of audience in all courts in the territory of India. Okay, he he has the right to speak and take part in the proceeding of both of the houses of the parliament. But yes, sir, he cannot vote. Vote can be done. Yes, vote can be done. He can be an audience. Be that the houses of the parliament or hella, so India sir, a court be, ja, man, a court or hella. So what is he? Audience is there. He has the right to audience to be an audience. Okay, but without the right to vote. next the primary function of the finance commission is to okay very good okay read the question again and answer Okay. What is your final answer? Okay. Initially, all of you have answered A, and now it is A, C, D, everything. What is it? 
the primary function of the finance commission is to distribution of revenue between center of st and states no so eta primary function tum hai he recommends the formula okay. but he doesn't distribute no the finance commission doesn't distribute prepare annual budget finance commission has limited role i would say not exactly advise the president on financial matters leave it allocate funds to various ministries of union and state governments definitely eta to kebe karan din ase to ame padhiba tankara kon kon achi functions finance commissioner kon dale distribution okay finance commission is required to make recommendations okay recommend kali karibe not binding to the president of india distribution of net proceeds of taxes to be shared between the center and states and allocation between states of the respective shares of such proceeds the so center out state okay tanka bhitare ko basis re net proceeds of taxes can be distributed kara out between states okay sei thare recommend karibe okay allocate karibe ki distribute karibe the principle that should govern the granting aid to the states by the center out of the constituent fund of india this is normally done for checking the revenue deficits of the states okay the measures needed to augment the constituent fund of the state to supplement the resources of the panchayats municipalities of the states any other matter referred to it by the president in the interest of sound finance so what does it do it make recommendation it advises the president on financial matters okay but the questions ko carefully padhe padhe kana eta bade upsc question hai okay it has not been taken out from any book so 15 finance commission mr padhe tike tanga chairman role nk singh okay this is the tenure 21 to 21 22 finance year to 25 26 finance year okay एटा बहुत ही इंपोर्टेंट एटा भल से मन रखबार अछि ओके एबे सेंट्रल स्टेट भीतर 41% होत रहल नेट प्रोसेस ऑफ टैक्सेस रे 41% स्टेट्स मन दिया होत अछि ओके 14 फाइनेंस कमीशन केते परसेंट दउ थिले 42 42 तो एटा 41 काई करा हला जम्मू कश्मीर पाए जो एक्स्ट्रा यूनियन टेरिटरीज हला से थ्रू 1% काटे यस yes. ओके okay. तो 15th फाइनेंस कमीशन दो एटा जोटा रहला एटा भलो से मन रखिवार अछि ओके पढि देबा फर्स्ट पॉपुलेशन इट इज को सेंसस रेटा एटा 15% परसेंट वेटेज दिया है कि 2011 2011 हां पूर्व जोटा तरह 14th फाइनेंस कमीशन सेटा को इयर पॉपुलेशन को वेटेज देथला Fourteen Finance Commission. Fourteen Finance Commission. I think nineteen seventy one. Both the seventy one census. Okay. Okay. The Fifteen Finance Commission two thousand eleven census. Go. Nella. Okay. The eta go nella tho. Disputes eta la southern or northern states eta re. Okay. सदर्न स्टेट्स मन कर कोनटा हला पॉपुलेशन तकर रिलेटिवली कमी छि 71 टू 2011 भितरे ले नॉर्दर्न हिंदी वर्ल्ड स्टेट्स सुडा तन पॉपुलेशन बढी छि ओके प्रोपोर्शनेटली तो से मन रेजिस्टेंस टू को इथि डेमोक्रेटिक परफॉर्मेंस सोटे ऐड करा हला हला डेमोक्रेटिक परफॉर्मेंस माने 71 टू 2011 भितरे केमिति तकर पॉपुलेशन को से माने मैनेज करिसन इट इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द बट population no no population no fertility rate okay okay so ta sei to eta hala income distance ta kon hala ki gote state ra gsdp state ra jodi per capita income ame uh, kadhi daba sei ta national per capita income to kete kam rahuchi okay to so, joda poor state ta ko beshi funds do ape eta kara hoychi okay income distance ta mane forest and ecology fairly simple area 
ओके अदर टैक्स एफर्ट्स तो से माने कौन टैक्स एफर्ट्स नो चंदी फिजिकल डिसिप्लिन पे आउ कौन टैक्स एफर्ट्स नो चंद से माने निजरो स्टेट और रिसोर्स को ऑगमेंट कर देते हैं ओके तो से गुड़ा को रहू छ इज इट क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू नेक्स्ट ओके यस इनकम डिस्टेंस लेके जेरा को इनकम डिस्टेंस होची गोटे स्टेट ऑफ पर कैपिटा इनकम सेटा किछ गोटे थिबो राइट जोटा बेस्ड हेतिबे जीएसडीपी ऊपर ग्रॉस स्टेट डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट ओके आ हमर जदी कंट्री रे जदी पर कैपिटा इनकम जदी करा हबो तो सेटा बेस करिवो कोनटा हबो जीडीपी ऊपर ओके तो ता ऊपर जो डिस्टेंस सर हो इनकम डिस्टेंस गोटे कंट्री हमर जदी इंडिया रो एबे पर कैपिटा इनकम आई थिंक इट इज 1.97 लाख रुपीस आई थिंक नॉट श्योर अबाउट इट तो तार गोटे स्टेट रो धरा जो 1.3 लाख थिबो तो जो डिस्टेंस ता हला ताकु वेटेज दिया हबो ओके तो पुअर स्टेट्स मानु को बेसी फंड मिलिबो ओके नेक्स्ट फेयरली सिंपल क्वेश्चन प्लीज रीड एंड आंसर और क्यों ये आंसर इस जो फेयरली सिंपल क्वेश्चन टू अलाउ विड्रॉल ऑफ मनी आउट ऑफ द कंसोलिडेटेड फंड ऑफ इंडिया दिस इज नॉट द रोल ऑफ द फाइनेंस कमीशन हु डज इट पार्लियामेंट यस दिस इज डन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द अप्रूवल ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट टू रेकमेंड द एलोकेशन बिटवीन द स्टेट्स द शेयर ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ द टैक्सेस यस रेकमेंड to recommend grants in aids for the states yes to manage their revenue deficits fiscal deficit revenue deficit eoda sabu clear hoi jibo au ee barsha ro budget ru padhi bi dabo ke value eoda sabu kete hoi fiscal deficit i think it is 5.9% check kar dabo thare okay to supervise and report on whether union and state governments are levying taxes in accordance with the budgetary provisions supervise and report this is not the role of the finance commission so Two and three B. Okay, so Article two eighty of the Constitution it provides for the Finance Commission, which is a quasi-judicial body. It is constituted by the President every fifth year. Okay. So we shall have details already. Body search. Next, last question of the year, of the session. The answer. <coughs> Okay. Skip. This is a fairly factual question. If you don't know it, it's better to skip. Okay. बहुत ही factual question है. But it was asked in EPSC. That's why I have uh, put this question in our session. So detail आप पढ़ी दबा. कौन सा बात है? तो in Gopal Swami anger. कमिटी कौन था रिअर्गानाइजेशन ऑन द मशीनरी ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट तो बेसिस कौन था था ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड मेथड्स एटा पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन यदि कार ऑप्शनल थी जानी थी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मेथड्स एगुडा को होची प्रिंसिपल ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव रिफॉर्म्स केंती मिनिस्ट्री एंड डिपार्टमेंट्स को केंती डिवीजन ऑफ वर्क और स्पेशलाइजेशन ने केंती ऑर्गेनाइज करा हबो ओके तो सेई बेसिस रे आ रिपोर्ट्स सेटा ही थिला हला 
केमती मिनिस्ट्री रो कैपेबिलिटीज इंप्रूव करा हबो बेस्ड ऑन ओएनडीएम मेथड्स ओके तो एठी किछि मेंशन नहीं कि मिनिस्टर की सेक्रेटरी आपे सोली रिस्पांसिबल हेबे कि नहीं ओके सो व्हाट वाज द क्वेश्चन इट सजेस्टेड दैट अ मिनिस्टर एंड अ सेक्रेटरी टू बी डेजिग्नेटेड सोली फॉर परसुइंग द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव रिफॉर्म्स एंड प्रमोटिंग इट दैट इज नॉट द केस इट हैज ओनली टॉक्ड अबाउट ओएनडीएम यूज ऑफ ओएनडीएम टू रिफॉर्म द वर्किंग ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्रीज एंड डिपार्टमेंट्स ओके second department of personnel was constituted on the recommendation of administrative reform commission 1966 this is first erc okay and was placed under the prime minister this is correct okay so first erc kon recommend karthila ki administrative reform ko got separate ministry kariya pa okay to so, aap is tarah kon tala department of personnel setup karala okay under the charge of the cabinet secretariat and it was placed under the overall charge of the prime minister assisted by minister of state okay so first year zero chairman kiye thila first year zero chairman kiye thile first administrative reform commission इमरजेंसी पर प्राइम मिनिस्टर के हेतले इंदिरा गांधी सॉरी मोराजी मोराजी ओके तो फर्स्ट ईयर सर से थले चेयरमैन थले ओके सेकंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव रिफॉर्म कमीशन दा के चेयरमैन थले वीरप्पा मोइली ओके सी ये तो यूपी गवर्नमेंट रो बहुत टाइम पे लॉ मिनिस्टर भी थले आ भी बहुत सारा पोर्टफोलियो भी और थला तो दिस इज इट फॉर टुडे I think this session has helped you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, previous to session, the upon the eighth day, there are recording available. So, if you have any time, how about if you please say that? Okay. Previous to the previous, what I have done, I am recording. Sorry, sir.